On today's show, we're at the Eden Project in Cornwall to celebrate the Green Badge. And there's only one way down from here. Let's go, Lynn! Yeah! Ah! Today's Blue Peter is all about this little guy, the green badge, which is made just down the road from here out of recycled yoghurt pots. Now, to earn one of these, all you have to do is send us in a picture, a poem, basically any bit of post that's got something to do with the environment, conservation or nature. So far this year, we have handed out over five and a half thousand of these little guys, but we want to hand out even more. So today's episode is all about inspiring you to get involved. Coming up. We visit a school who are doing so well at looking after the environment that almost all of them have green badges. This is looking This is good. looking amazing now. And I deliver a green surprise to some viewers who have been working really hard at upcycling. We are in one of the world's largest indoor rainforests, so Richie and I thought it only makes sense to do a bit of research and find out why looking after our rainforest and our planet is so very important. And to tell us more, just up here, the other side of the bridge, we've got Jo. Now, she works on the team that helped to look after this place. Jo, hello. Hiya. Welcome to Blue Peter. Hi. Thank you so much for being on the show and for having Sarah? us here today. We're loving it. First things first, tell us why are rainforests so important? Well, they might only cover 2% of the whole world, but there's half the animals and plants of the, in the world live in them, half the ones on land anyway that live in them. And that's really important. And our crops come from the rainforest, chocolate and bananas, for example. And also, and the most important thing, the clues in the name, they're rainforests. They help regulate the Earth's temperature. OK, but how do they do that? So they rain, so that's really important because yeah. that's cooling. They make really big white clouds and white reflects heat, so that's important as well and they sweat. So when they make the clouds, I bet you're a little bit hot now. Yeah. And that cools <laughs> yeah, us really. down and they sweat. And it reduces the Earth's temperature by four degrees. Really important. We can't deny the fact that rainforests are, of course, in trouble. Why is that? Huge trouble and it's down to us, or all of us, the products we buy because they destroy the rainforest in order to grow them. So that's the most important thing is looking at the labels to look at what products are rainforest friendly because those mean they don't cut down the rainforest in order to produce them, and that's really, really important. What can we do in the UK, though? Because obviously we're thousands and thousands of miles away from rainforests, so how can we help? We can help in two main ways, really. One is by looking at the label and buying crops which are rainforest friendly, and the other way is to help reduce climate change, because rainforests control the climate, but also the hotter climate is making rainforests die as well. Mm. So we need to help lock carbon down from up here, carbon dioxide, lock it down, and get the carbon from down here and leave it, leave yes. it down there. It's really important. So reduce what you do, reuse stuff, recycle. All of those things that are important back here will help save the rainforest out there. Well, Joe, thank you so much for being on Blue Peter. It just shows that little things can make such a massive difference. So I went to meet two BP viewers who've done just that with a lot of upcycling. Peter's been making things out of cardboard tubes and bottle tops since almost the beginning of time. This one is created entirely from junk. Maybe not that long, but we have been ahead of this recycling game for years. Spare bottles? We've got you covered. Cardboard tubes? Look no further. Old newspapers? We're all over it. This is the Blue Peter Makes Room, where we come up with all of our makes. But what we love the most is when you guys get really creative and dream up all sorts of upcycling ideas that we've never even thought of. Like Lola, who sent us this massive green badge made out of recycled milk bottle tops. Great job, Lola. Monty put this robot together using loads of different materials, including cardboard tubes and paper. Fab work. A few weeks ago, I went to surprise some BP viewers who have been getting really creative with recycling to give them their very own green badges. This is Bella, and she's in for a very special green surprise. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, are you Bella? High five. Good to meet you. Did you write into Blue Peter? Yeah. Well, luckily for you, Bella, 
I've got a little surprise for you, and here's your little brother. It's your very own green badge. There you go. How does that feel? Good. Feels good. Am I allowed to come in and hang out? Is that all right? Come on then. Hello, buddy. <laughs> Let's talk about this. I've got to be very careful with it. This was the letter that you, oh yeah, let's hold that bit on, that you sent in to Blue Peter. So tell me, why is this letter special? Because I made it by myself. You recycled other bits and actually wrote a letter to Blue Peter on paper that you'd made yourself. That is amazing. Listen, could you show me how to make paper like this? Think you can show me? Let's do it. We've recreated the studio make table in Bella's living room. Luckily, we came prepared. So this is an old bit of Blue Peter script we've got here. And we've just cut it into loads of bits. And then you can see we've soaked it in water. What's the next thing we need to do? Um, mash it all up. Time to get messy. We need to turn this papery, watery mixture into a paste. Next, we have to put it on this, Lindsay. OK, come on then. We're pushing the paste through a wire mesh to remove the water and create a dry piece of paper. So, Bella, why do you think it's really important that we recycle? It'll help our planet if we recycle, and if we don't, it'll ruin our planet. Well said, Bella. And I've had a great idea to hurry this along. OK, that was potentially an awful idea, but yeah. I've gone with it. We've done it now, so... <laughs> After my uh, bright idea, this mix is drained again. What do we have to do now? Leave it to dry. And how long does that take? Lindsay, it's going to take ages. <laughs> Bella will have to leave her paper to dry for a couple of days, but I don't have that long because I'm off to give out another badge. So let's hit the road. This is upcycle expert Leah, and the last thing she's probably expecting is me rocking up at her front door. Hello, are you Leah? Yeah. Do you know why I'm here? Yeah. Why? To give my green badge. Oh, maybe. You might have just got it. Here you go, Leah. Your very own home delivery of a green badge. There you go. Is it all right if I come in and join in? Yeah. Is that OK? Come on. Let's talk about what we can see right in front of us, because these designs are absolutely amazing. And you sent us this very letter to Blue Peter telling us about these recycled plastic bottles that you've made into these animals. So where did you get the idea for these? We did it at school. I just really enjoyed doing that, so I decided to do it again. Amazing. Well, they look so good. I know you're a huge BP super fan, aren't you? Yeah. So you must know about our dog, Henry. Yeah. Well, I was thinking we could make these, but in Henry form. What do you reckon? Yep, I've got everything we need. <gasps> How did you do that? That was unbelievable. OK, where do we start? You mix some water and glue together to make the um, wet mixture. We build up layers of tissue paper on the bottle using the mixture, and it will hopefully look like this. Oh, there we go. It's lucky you had that there. <laughs> and then what do we need to do? You paint it brown. OK, a nice Henry brown. OK, so once we've painted it and it's dried, what do we need to do next? You, you look like this. Oh, lovely, OK. We need to stick on stuff like a nose, two eyes and some ears. OK, and where are those? Here. You're very good at that, Leah. All right, come on, let's get sticking then. We start with Henry's ears and face. We need to wait for it to dry so we can stick all the other features on top. And once it's ready, it looks something like this. <gasps> How do you keep doing this? It's unbelievable. <laughs> Leah, thank you so much. Do you know what? Henry is going to absolutely love that. High five. Legend. Bella and Leah have proved that with a bit of imagination, turning old stuff into new stuff can be loads of fun. All together, girls. Apply for your green badge now. Get your green badge now. Amazing job there from Bella and Leah. Now, a lot of products that we use actually come from the rainforest, like medicines and foods, but we've got to be really careful with those products we use so that we don't damage the rainforest. I've got my experts right here ready to help me. We'll come to you in just a minute. But first, Joe, what exactly are we looking at here? This is an oil palm tree, a small one. There's some really big ones over there. And palm oil is produced from the oil palm tree, from the big fruits that grow on it at the 
So tell us a bit more about palm oil, because it, it is a bit controversial, isn't it? Yeah, the problem is it's a really good oil, so everybody wants it in their products. 60% of the products that we use, that we get in the supermarket, have, have it in them. And an area half the size of the UK has been cut down already to grow them, of rainforest. Which isn't good, I suppose, for animals like orangutans? Orangutans, rhinos, tigers. Yeah, and okay. disappearing. Well, we'll come to our eco experts here. What do you think that we can do to help just a little bit? Well, I think we should, before you buy stuff, check on the back of labels just to make sure it either has to have no palm oil or sustainable palm oil in it. Okay, and what else? It's also nice to talk, like, to research about it and talk to your friends about it. Exactly, it is so important to educate ourselves. Girls, thank you so much for being on Blue Peter. Uh, Richie, what have you found over there? Well, Lindsay, we are here with our expert Leo, Lily and Nusrat as well. But, Leo, yeah, what are we looking at over there? So we're just looking at some banana fruit here. It really doesn't look like a banana, does it? No. No, what, what's going on? Those are just baby ones. They'll grow okay. a little uh, bit more. Apparently, bananas are a little bit in trouble. Is that correct? Yeah, so a lot of different crops are in trouble uh, due to climate change, causing extreme weather events and pests and diseases are on the increase because of that. OK, guys, what can we do to help stop this from happening in the future? Use less plastic. Amazing. Lily? Recycle more. Perfect. Now, every single little thing that we do can really make a difference. For example, a school that we went to visit recently are really well and truly doing their bit. A few weeks ago, Jasper wrote into Blue Peter to apply for his green badge. But then Jasper's whole class wrote in to get involved with their green badges. All right, guys. <laughs> Wait a sec. But then even more classes wrote into us and they got their green badges. How cool. Guys, this is amazing. This school must be so green. It really is. Have a look at this. Over the last 12 months, this school in North Devon have made some big changes to reduce their impact on the environment, including trying to become single-use plastic-free. So naturally, we had to pay them a visit to find out exactly how they're doing this. And we start by meeting two pupils helping to lead the way in this green school revolution. Jasper, what made you ride into Blue Peter and apply for your green badge? I went to the beach and started picking up a lot of litter. So I wrote in for my green badge and then I thought if the whole school gets one, we could be a plastic free school and a green badge holder too. That is so cool. So you started a green revolution in the school? <laughs> yeah. Kitty, why do you think it's important to look after our planet? At school, we learn about all things like reusing, reducing and recycling, and we try to learn how to do that. It really is so important, isn't it, to care for our environment and the world we live in. We're so excited to be at your school, so I think we might have a little look around and get some top tips. Changes have been made all over, but I'm heading to a part of the school where they've made a particularly big difference. Now, I've heard that the kitchen in this school has undergone some changes to help with the environment. I'm with Esme and Kerry, who is in charge of the kitchen. What sort of changes can you tell me about? Basically, the children approached me last year and they said that they were really concerned about the amount of plastic that's going into the oceans. Yeah. What could I do about it? So we looked at uh, what we were using in plastics that we could substitute. Um, sauce sachets we stopped using, milk cartons as well. We now we don't use the little ones with the straws. We've got the big ones that can be recycled. And also the plastic wrap that we use on our food, because obviously everything has to be covered. We've changed to tin foil. Just little bits here and there that we can do, we are doing. This kitchen has six bins for recycling almost everything. And I'm helping Esme to recycle some packaging that's left over from lunchtime, aluminium foil. All we need to do is scrunch it up into a ball and throw it into the recycling bin. Simple. Right, let's. Let's do a little competition and see whose aim is better. It's important, though, that the foil is clean before it can be recycled. Yeah, high five. Love that. Two out of two. But it's not just in the kitchen that the school is helping the environment. Outside, they've got their very own solar panels that help power the building. Sam and Sunday are here to tell Lindsay why this is great news. It's better than normal energy because it doesn't affect the environment as much. This toy car demonstrates what energy from the sun can do. It's a like, mini version of the solar panels. So this is the solar panel up there. And if we just slide that into the spring, yeah. it should work. It should work. Oh! <laughs> oh, just kick off the edge! <laughs> 
That is awesome, I want one. Reusing and recycling everything they can is second nature to this lot, and we've heard that some of them have been working on a very special project. Hey guys, how are you? This looks very this looks exciting. Like amazing. What are you up to? Um, so we found lots of plastic on the beach and we're making a blue pizza badge out of it. That's awesome. It's looking very good. It's very, very neat. Can we help a little bit? Yeah. Amazing. Yes. How often do you do beach cleans? Uh, really regularly to stop plastic going into the sea. And Indy, why do you think that's important? Because if the plastic goes into the sea, then the animals think it's other animals and they eat it and then um, they get poorly. Yeah, it can make animals so poorly. We need eco-warriors like you on our beaches. We We're very do. impressed. This is looking This is good. looking amazing now. The guys have done such a great job, we think they've earned themselves a little green surprise. Is it right that some of you guys don't have green badges? Yeah. Am I right in thinking that? Well, luckily, brought along a bit of a treat for you all today. Look, it's your very own green Blue Peter badges. Yeah. Who wants one of those? Yeah? yeah? Yes, here we go. It's so important for everyone yeah. to do their bit, however big or small. And don't forget, by doing this, you could earn yourself one of these, a green badge. So what are you waiting for? And if this inspirational school has got you wondering how you too can earn your green badge, wonder no more. All you have to do is send in a piece of post about nature, conservation or the environment to this address. It could be a picture, a poem, maybe a letter, or you could tell us about something that you have been doing to help the planet. Do any of those things and you could be joining the thousands and thousands of viewers who have already earned one this year. So get creative, we can't wait to see your posts. What a truly amazing thing that school are doing, very, very well done. Now another thing that is vital to saving the environment is also saving water. Leo, why is this so important? Well, processing water uses a lot of energy, so we really want to reduce the amount of energy that we use by saving water. Fair enough. Um, what are you doing here at the Eden Project to help save water as well? Uh, so we, two thirds of the water we use comes from recycled water, basically. So the rain falling on all the surfaces across the site, and uh, the grey water, which is just basically murky water from things like washing up. Okay, and I understand that your, your toilets and your taps are also quite special here as well. Yeah, so they're all on a timer. Uh, so just enough to flush and just enough to wash our hands. Perfect. Really intelligent stuff. Lindsay, what are you up to over there? Well, we're using a bit of grey leftover water to water some of the plants here. Let's all gather round because I know that you guys have some good top tips on what we can do to save water. So go on, hit me up. What can we do? We can take showers instead of baths because it's like using half the water. That's a good one. And try and take really short showers. Yeah. What else can we do? So when you brush your teeth, leave the tap off. That's a good one, so it's not just wasting yeah. running water. What else? Well, my dad told me after it rains, you can just harvest the water from your roof and use it to water flowers in the garden and stuff like that. That's so good, exactly. You can water your garden exactly as we are. We'll get back to the watering, guys. I think this is going to take a while. The Eden Project is quite large, uh, but recently I actually went to visit a garden made especially for children. Have a look. Back in January, I braved the freezing cold weather and headed to one of Britain's most impressive gardens as something rather exciting was happening. Kew Gardens is setting up a brand new children's garden for all you green finger gardeners and anyone who loves to play outside. Now it's going to be the size of nearly 40 tennis courts and it's designed around all the elements that plants need to grow. Earth, air, sun and water. Work is well underway for the big opening on the 18th of May. And as I couldn't wait to find out more, I went to meet Richard, Q's Head of Garden Design. Hi, Richard. Oh, hi, Lindsay. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. This all looks very exciting. It is. So why is this project and this garden going to be so special? Well, I think it's the first time Q Gardens has really made a garden just for children. And we've always wanted it to be a garden with playthings in it like this rather than a playground with plants in it. So it should be unique for children, I think. I mean, even in the early phases, it is already really coming together. It's looking really cool. It's amazing, actually. I'm really excited about the whole thing. Well, what can I do to help? Because I've got my green badge on. Oh, well done. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to plant the tree, but you're not going to be able to do it with that spade. 
That's because this is no ordinary tree. This is an eight meter, three ton red cedar tree. I think I might need a bigger spade. So they're just maneuvering it so it's in the right position, because once it's in, we won't be able to move it again. Oh, he's squishing it down. He's squishing a root ball down to try and level it up, and then you have to go in and start shoveling soil in the other oh, side. Oh, this is me? That's your oh, turn. Oh, right, see Off ya. You go. Oh. That's nice, isn't it? It's all right, isn't good it? Good job, well done. looking good. But there's much more to be planted. One of the best things that's going to be planted here are these, the blue peter seeds. But we couldn't do that in a chilly January. Planting seeds is all about timing, so we had to wait for two months until we could come back and find the perfect spot for them. This time, I've called in a bit of backup. It's George. Our green-fingered superhero has been helping us to look after the Blue Peter Garden for the past few years. Now, I really like gardening because that's that certain excitement of planting a really small seed, putting it in the ground with the hope that it will grow into something big. Hi, okay. George, high five. Whoa. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. So I brought you to queue today because I have the special Blue Peter seed. So I thought, I need help. I need George. <laughs> The Blue Peter seeds are extra special as they were created to celebrate our 60th birthday. Last year, Radzi visited a seed nursery to receive the first batch. This is genuinely awesome. And we're going to plant some in the children's garden too. This is Susie, a garden designer here, and she knows where we need to plant the BP seeds. They're going to go just behind us on this trellis here because they're climbing plants, so they need something to grow up. And also, we've got a lot of sunshine here, so they like that. They're going to look amazing. I say we get them out of the packet and into the ground. Our seeds need the right amount of air, water and heat to set off the germination process, which is when the seeds start to grow. They've been soaking in water for 24 hours to soften their shells to make the germination easier. So we've got our pots here. So we're going to fill them pretty much all to the top. Mm -hmm. oh, there we go. Nice bit of compost there. And then we're just going to level it off with our hands so it's nice and smooth. And then, just with our finger, we're going to do about a quarter of an inch, just in there, a little hole. We're going to put it in mm -hmm. and just cover it up again with a nice light bit of soil. Amazing. Let's get planting. Our pots will be tucked up in the greenhouse until they're strong enough to plant outside. Perfect. Well, that was easy. Let's go get a brew, shall we? Hang on a minute. We've got loads of plants that need planting in the children's garden, so could you give us a hand? Yeah, go on. Should we do it? Do it. With 18,500 plants, they need all the help they can get and never want to shy away from a bit of planting, George takes charge. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dig a trench going along here that we're going to put the lavender in. Right, we've been digging for quite a while. Who wants a break? Yeah. Yeah? Let's put the spades down and go have a look round. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yes. <laughs> now, Lynn, this is one of my favourite plants. What is it? So this is called an Nepenthes, or a pitcher plant. And they're a species of carnivorous plant, which means they eat living things. This plant oozes this sugary liquid and basically flies get attracted to it, they drink it and they get a bit dizzy. They fall in, they get digested and the plant basically eats them. George, I, lo yeah. I love when you tell me about plants. George, I really wanted to bring you here because this is the tree that I actually planted all by myself. My own hands, no help. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's all right. Oh, wow. Whoa, it's massive. What's that? So this is our new totem pole. So this was installed only this morning, so you're the first people to see it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Tour over, back to digging. George, you know what this has got me thinking? Have our seeds germinated yet? Uh, Lindsay, try two more time. Oh. Yeah, I know, I was testing you. Let's get back to digging. He's very bossy, isn't he? That was such a good day out with George. And I've got to say, it is absolutely roasting in here, isn't it? It it's is. It's tropical. Tropical. I feel like we're in a real rainforest. It's brilliant. 
It's boiling, nearly as brilliant, and maybe not as boiling, as this big bad wall, which as you can see is a special edition. It's entirely green and it's covered in all of your incredible eco-themed post just for this week. Oh, it's so good. Have a look at this. It's been sent in by Katie and Kenny. Now they've made, using a bit of beeswax and some cloth, they've made these so they don't have to use plastic at home when they're wrapping up food in the kitchen. We think this is genius. Thank you so much, guys. You have more than earned yourselves green Blue Peter badges. Naomi from Northern Ireland has done this post about her eco-friendly home, which as you can see has got plenty of greenery in it, as well as an electric car, LED lights and a vegetable patch as well. Thank you so much, Naomi. That's brilliant. Check this out. It's from Otis. Now, he's done seven inventions to save the planet. He's basically written an entire novel here. It's brilliant. There's so many drawings in there, so many facts, and he's even shouted out his mum right at the start saying, thanks, mum, because she did some of the typing. Well done, Otis. That is wonderful. And Ismail from Birmingham has done not one, but two posters showcasing a sick planet and a healthy planet. The sick planet, of course, has got plastic and pollution everywhere, and the healthy planet is covered in recycling and upcycling and also um, environmentally friendly LED lights as well. And please take note of the fact that these little paper balls took in total two days to make. It's amazing. Keep your post coming into the usual address. We absolutely love the stuff that you send us. Of course, all of these people this week got a green badge, but maybe you want one of these, your very own 2019 Blue Peter Sport Badge. You haven't got long, they're only out for the summer. Have you earned your 2019 Sport Badge yet? To get yours, you need to have a go at a sport you've not tried before for at least an hour. Get someone to take a photo of you doing it, then fill in the application form and tell us all about it. The form and all the information you need is on the Blue Peter website. This limited edition badge is only available until the 30th of September 2019, so don't wait around. Earn your 2019 Sport Badge now. Also on the website this week, scientist Matthew Shribman gives his top planet-saving tips. One, spread the word. Two, find out about green electricity. Three, eat less meat. Four, fly less. Five, stop using plastic. If you try to do even some of these things, then you'll be making a huge difference in helping our beautiful planet and all of the wonderful creatures that live here. And can you sort your paper from your plastic? Try our Ecotastic game only on the Blue Peter website. That's all we've got time for today, but make sure you join us next week for a show all about the Silver Badge. That's right, we're going to be joined by BP legend Connie Hutch. She's going to be in the studio showing you some science experiments that you can try at home. And as well as that, we're trying office chair racing. Yep, you heard me right. It's going to be very fun. But in the meantime, make sure you get all of your green posts into us because we would love to see it. See you next week. Bye.